Hi students, as we wrap up this unit, we are going to learn what functions look like in the equation form and what function notation means, and then how do I evaluate functions for different input values. So last time we talked about relations and specifically the special type of relations which are called functions and those are when each input gives one and only one output. So we're going to review some pieces. So remember the inputs, those are your x values. These are also the represent the independent variable in this situation. And then we also are starting to get used to this idea of domain. Domain is all of the different x values together. Okay. On the y side, these are our outputs. These values or these quantities are dependent, the opposite of independent. They are dependent on my inputs. So they are actually determined by my x values or my inputs. And then we're also starting to associate this word range with the y values, and this is all of the possible y values. So the new part is when we have a relation that is also a function, we can actually, instead of y as our variable, we can write it as f of x. I need you to know how to say this, f of x. This does not mean f times x. It does not mean f times x. This f of x is the name of the function. Okay, so I want you to write this here. f of x, because I want you to be able to say it properly. And this is the name of the function. So let's take a look at this relation. Because of what I know about functions, I can see that this relation is also a function. If I look at my x values, I see that none of them repeat, which means that each, each x value gives me one y value or one output. Okay, so we're going to kind of relate this to function notation. So remember in an ordered pair, the first coordinate is your x, the second coordinate is your y. Well, since this is also a relation, Instead of using y to represent my second coordinate, I can now call it f of x. So let's talk more about that f of x. So when you see a function, it will generally have a letter in front, which represents the name of the function. This function we could call f. It could be g, h, anything. It doesn't have to be f. And then the number or the letter after it in parentheses represents the input variable. So notice it's telling you basically what this means right here. This means for function f, my input variable is x. Okay. So what does it mean for this case? Here's an example. So for that point 0, 1, I could say for my function, when my input is 0, my output is 1. Okay, remember, whatever's in parentheses, this is your input. Usually it's x. And then whatever the f of input equals, that is your output. So that is the value of that function when my input is 0. The value of the function is 1 when my input is 0. So if I look at the next point, I could write it like this. f of 1 equals 2 when my function has an input of 1, my output is 2. So we're trying to get into this idea of what function notation means and what it looks like. So let's look at an example of a function that gives you a function rule. So up here at the top, the name of our function is f of x. Its input is the x variable. Notice that it's inside the parentheses. The way that I find my outputs is by using this expression over here. So while we might be used to seeing an equation like y equals 3x plus 1, it kind of is the same. We're taking out the y part and putting f of x in its place. 
So the 3x plus 1 is how we get the outputs from the inputs. It's called the function rule. So it says we're going to evaluate it. Evaluate it means take out your x values and replace them with numbers and then simplify. And the x values that we're going to use are found in this given domain. So remember domain, those are my x values, and here are my possible x values. So we're going to go ahead and try this. So the way that we do it is like this. We're going to first evaluate for that first input value of negative 1. So where my x is in my function name f of x, I'm going to put f of negative 1. And I'm going to evaluate it or replace the x part with the negative 1. So 3 times negative 1 plus 1, and then I'm going to simplify that. So I'm just simplifying the function rule part. So 3 times negative 1 is negative 3, and then if I add 1 to that, I get negative 2. So we say f of negative 1 equals negative 2. And what that means is when my input is negative 1, my output is negative 2. I could also think of this as an ordered pair. Remember, my x-coordinate would be first, negative 1, followed by my y-coordinate, or my output, which would be negative 2. So this is how it would look as an ordered pair. Now we're going to do it for the next one, f of 0, when my input's 0. I'll have 3 times 0 plus 1. 3 times 0 is 0. 0 plus 1 is 1. So my output's 1 when my input is 0. And as an ordered pair, my x value when it's 0, my output is 1. Okay, we've got one more. I'm going to erase this part just so I have a little bit more room. Now we're going to evaluate when our x is 2. So let me kind of separate this up. So for my function, when my input is 2, my output is found by 3 times 2 plus 1. 3 times 2 is 6. 6 plus 1 is 7. So when my input is 2, my output is 7. Now what I've just found, I've just found my three outputs for those three inputs. I have found these as my outputs when I have input negative 1, 0, and 2. The negative 1, 0, and 2 was my domain. So what I've just found is I've actually found my range. And so remember how to represent that. We're just going to put the values. So I've got negative 2 as an output. I've got 1 as an output, and I've got 7 as an output. So this is my answer. These are my outputs. When this was when these were my inputs, so that's really the notes. We'll go. We'll do some examples in class today, but that's it. See you soon.